2017 was an interesting year for Sonic, I think we can all agree on that. I was originally going to do a video on Sonic Mania, and maybe I still will eventually, but really all I have to say about it is that it's awesome. It was an amazing return to the gameplay of the original games, but with improvements every which way. Better bosses, better level design, better bonus stages, better controls, less glitches, less frustration in general. It wasn't 100% perfect, but honestly, it was pretty close. It was an amazing game, and a lot of fun. And then Sonic Forces came out. Sonic Forces was set to be a return to the Boost-style games seen in Sonic Unleashed, Sonic Colors, and Sonic Generations. After that weird detour they took with Lost World, it looked to have a darker and overly dramatic plot, similar to the Sonic Adventure games. Classic Sonic was back once again, and they introduced a third type of gameplay. You can create your own Sonic OC and play as them in the Avatar levels. It feels like they just threw everything they had together in a desperate plea to please everyone and make a great Sonic game. <sighs> yeah, this game was not what I was hoping it would be. But let's start at the beginning. The plot opens up with Sonic running through Green Hill Zone, which is now a desert for some reason. Eggman sort of messed up the world in this game's plot, but at this point in the story, I don't think he's taken over the planet yet, so I'm not really sure if they ever fully explain why there's so much sand here. But anyway, Sonic is running through Green Hill Zone on his way to confront Eggman. When he gets there, though, he's attacked by Shadow, Metal Sonic, Chaos, and who gives a crap. And then the new antagonist shows up, Infinite. He's so edgy and cool. Seriously though, this character is ridiculous. He is so edgy. The way he talks. I will teach you fear, then pain, and then, well, at least the fear and pain will end. His theme song. His overall design, this character was literally created just to be dark and edgy. I don't even know how to talk about this character. It's just so ridiculous. I mean, just look up his theme song and you'll know exactly what kind of character he is. And you'll probably also have a good laugh. Don't get me wrong though, I love this guy. I am not making fun of him. I find this guy hilarious. Anyway, Infinite was stronger and faster than Sonic. He effortlessly knocked Sonic out of commission, and then we jump several months later. Eggman's forces have taken over almost the entire planet. Sonic has been captured and taken to the newly rebuilt Death Egg. What is this, Death Egg number 7? And a resistance has formed to stop him. This resistance being led by... Knuckles? Sega really seems like they just can't make up their mind about Knuckles. I mean, in the last few games, he was... Well, I would have wrapped this up sooner. But, eh, what are you gonna do? And now he's... Eggman's forces have chewed through our defenses at Green Hill, and the resistance in the city is reporting that whatever it is that finished Sonic... I'm sorry, I'm still not used to saying that. Yeah. I may have wanted Knuckles to be a bit smarter and a bit more serious after Sega turned him into a complete brain-dead idiot in recent years, but making him the leader of the resistance just seems silly. Also, I like how none of these characters are wearing new clothing. They're supposed to be this big underground resistance group during a war that's been going on for like six months. But Vector's still sporting his bling and Amy's still wearing her red dress. Just seems weird, but maybe that's me. It's not like half of these characters have anything to contribute or do anyway. All Amy ever does is talk about how worried she is for everybody's safety. Please, come back in one piece. I just want everyone to get home safely, okay? She's basically the mom of the resistance. Doesn't look like much. Neither do you, Charmy, but I still managed to find a use for your pointy butt. <laughs> Care to list any of those things? I am actually very interested in learning what Charmy has to offer. Oh yeah, and this handsome purple creature here is my own Sonic OC. You can make some pretty dumb looking characters to be honest. And honestly, that's great. It's very funny. But I, of course, went for a more dignified design for my OC. His name is Tornado, the hedge bird. By the way, original character, do not steal. So anyway, classic Sonic suddenly shows up with basically no explanation, and then they go into space to save regular Sonic, who, according to Knuckles, has been in captivity being tortured by Eggman for months. They are honestly kind of chill about it. Torturing Sonic just to pass the time. Oh, that's low, even for Eggman. Yeah, torturing someone for six months, breaking them in both body and spirit. That's low. You gotta be a real jerk.
Actually, when we see Sonic in prison shortly after, he seems pretty okay for someone who's been through several months of torture. Oh hey, sounds like the party started. Wanna let me go and join in? No? Of course not. You hate fun. Yeah, he seems like he's really been through a lot. I got six months of payback I'm just dying to spend. This sounds like a good start. By the way, I've been tortured, just like you said. Chili dogs! Sonic escapes, and him, along with classic Sonic and the Avatar character, which, by the way, is never given a name, set out to overthrow Eggman's army, defeat Infinite, and save the world! Speaking of the Avatar, let's start talking about those levels. They are... not great. They feel like modern Sonic stages, but worse. You run around, but you have no boost, and instead of Sonic's homing attack, you have a grappling hook. For the most part, the Avatar stages are extremely easy and honestly not very fun. They're clunky, oftentimes slow, oftentimes very automatic. They're just bad. The main gimmick of these levels is the weapon you use, which is called a Wispun. They took Wisp and Weapon and <laughs> they put them together! They're geniuses! There are several different Wispens that you can use. Some of them are almost kind of fun to use, but not really, and some of them are terrible. These weapons are extremely overpowered. It takes zero effort to kill enemies with them, so you basically end up just pressing the attack button whenever you approach enemies, and they die. Fun. The Wispens are also used to interact with the environment and activate shortcuts or alternate routes, like using the Electric Wispen to lightspeed dash across rings, or the Fire Wispen to boost through the air, or the Hover Wispen to hover through the air, or the Cube Wispen to... Actually, the cube is terrible. I don't even really see the point of its existence. There's nothing cool you can really do with it. And you have to completely come to a stop and use it twice just to kill enemies with it. The drill also sucks. It's not very fun to use, is rarely helpful, and is completely useless when in a 3D segment. I'm not even exaggerating. It is completely useless unless you're in 2D. Using it causes you to spaz out all over the place, uncontrollably, and it will get you killed. To be honest though, none of the weapons are very fun to use. The way you move when attacking with the electric one just feels janky and weird. The only weapon that actually feels kind of good to use is the Fire Wispin, which is the first one you get. Certain Avatar levels favor certain weapons, but there's no clear indication what weapon you should have when you first enter a level. They seem to really want you to play through these levels multiple times to learn which weapon to use. But without being able to activate a shortcut or hidden route, these levels are often pretty dull. Actually, scratch that. Even if you have the right Wispin, they're still pretty boring. I mean, look at this. This is the final Avatar level, and if you have the Hover Wispin, then you can fly over almost the entire level. It's about as fun as it looks. In this one level, I couldn't even figure out one of the alternate routes. I see those Wisps up there, so naturally I assumed that I had to burst up there to grab them. And then that would unlock an alternate route. But apparently not, because right before I reached them, the camera turned around, so I died. I never did figure out exactly why they were up there, either. Never got them, I just moved on. And look here, I stepped over a crack in the floor, and I fell through it and died. So fun! Occasionally, you'll have an Avatar level where you're teamed up with Sonic. This basically just means that you can use Sonic's boost. That's pretty much the only difference. These levels tend to be slightly better, but still nothing to write home about. These levels really are just mindless. Run through them, attack enemies, and look for things to grapple onto. Except where mindless gameplay can be fun and fast, here it's slower and you just attack enemies a lot. This game just doesn't feel good to control, either. You always feel really heavy and the jumping isn't the best feeling, leading to a lot of missed jumps. This is actually a good segue into what really matters in this game, the Sonic levels. I don't think I need to explain the basic concept for the modern and classic Sonic gameplay, it's pretty self-explanatory, plus it's basically the same as it was in Sonic Generations. At least on paper, that is. The controls, physics, and level design definitely have some differences. I'll start with the modern Sonic stages. The level design is not as good, plain and simple. It's just not as good. It's more bare bones. It can be fun at times, but overall it's a lot more straightforward. There are a lot of sections where you're just running forward and boosting. There's also less variety. Sonic Generations had you grinding, running over water, and surfing down the streets of City Escape. Sonic Forces has running and grinding. 
call me unfair if you want, but they don't really switch it up too much. There are also a good amount of sections in this game designed without guardrails, meaning that if you're boosting forward, you're more than likely going to boost right off a ledge and die. It just doesn't feel fair. The levels often feel very poorly designed around the boost formula. This is made even worse because the movement controls aren't as good as they were before. There's no drift anymore, making some tight turns basically impossible. You'll fly right off the stage and miss turns to alternate routes all the time. But other than that, the control in this game is fine, and is in no way worse than Sonic Generations. Just kidding. The jumping controls suck, as I've already mentioned about the Avatar levels. I'll attempt to explain how the control feels as best I can. Once you've jumped, you stay at the speed that you're already going. In Generations, you could better control Sonic in the air. Jumping from a low speed, but holding the direction that you're going, would speed you up as you jump. But in this game, it's much more important to get a running start before jumping. If you don't, then you won't jump very far. This goes the other way, too. If you're running really fast and jump, you'll jump much further, but you won't be able to stop midair. If I'm running to the right and I jump, I should be able to then slow myself down in the air by pressing left. This is just basic side-scrolling rules. It just feels better. Prime example right here. I died in this specific section way too many times, aka at all. I find the homing attack isn't as good or reliable either, often not locking onto enemies when I feel like it should. It's extremely annoying. Alright, let's stop there for now and move on to Classic Sonic. Classic Sonic is awful. In my opinion, these are the worst levels. I really did not enjoy them. And I loved Sonic Mania, and the original games, and the classic Sonic stages from Generations. Those were good. Not all of them, but most of them. But here, he just controls terribly. He's also way slower than he was in Generations. Or any game. Classic Sonic is slow. I mean, look here. I'm running down this long slope, and I can't make it up this ramp. I mean, this is inexcusable. He's so slow that you have to stop and spin dash constantly just to make it up slopes and through loops. I'm not making this up. They lowered his maximum speed or something. I have no idea why they would do this. I mean, it just baffles the mind. I mean, it was either a huge oversight due to them rushing through development or just being stupid and not caring, or they made a conscious decision to slow Sonic down. But I can't even begin to imagine why they would do that. Hello, this is Sonic Team. This is the CEO, and I have the most brilliant idea, and I want you to hear it. <sighs> okay, uh, what is it this time, sir? We make it so that classic Sonic is significantly slower. What? What? No. No, that's a stupid idea. Why in the world would we- <laughs> Oh! Oh, okay, fine, we'll do it! How would you even do that? You can drop dash like in Sonic Mania, but it feels like these levels weren't really designed with this in mind, making it feel like it was an afterthought. Using the drop dash often just leads to me dying. I'm sorry, but if Sonic is going super fast and he hits a very small hole, then he should skip over it, not fall straight down. Or at the very least, give me enough notice so that I can actually jump over it. Seriously, it just feels like they didn't polish this gameplay at all. If Classic Sonic dashes over a ledge, he flies straight down, like there's a magnet waiting to pull him down the moment he steps over a ledge. This wasn't a problem in Sonic Generations. Look, Classic Sonic boosts over ledges and doesn't immediately fly straight down and die. Whoa! Whoa, how unreal! Oh my god, they did it again. An auto-scrolling level. My complaints from the Master System games stand. This is a stupid thing to do in a Sonic game. Now, if it's a special stage, like the plane ride from Sonic Mania or something like that, then it's more excusable, sure. But this? This is stupid. So, yeah, classic Sonic sucks. It's like the game is constantly fighting against me to have freaking fun. I hate most of the classic levels. My freaking god, they are not designed well at all. And Classic Sonic hardly even matters in the plot either. He has no presence at all. He just randomly shows up, saves Tails, and then does some stuff. Has some levels, and then he leaves. He doesn't even really have a personality. I had this issue with Sonic Generations as well. For the most part, Classic Sonic has no personality. He just stands there. I get that he's a mute and he doesn't talk, but that doesn't mean that he can't have personality. 
The classic Sonic from the opening animation for Sonic Mania was so freaking good. He had personality. They were able to show it through his actions, mannerisms, and facial expressions. This classic Sonic is... he just stands there. He doesn't talk, and not once in the entire game does he do anything that makes me think that he's Sonic, other than run fast and look like Sonic. I guess he attacked Eggman at one point. Sonic does that. I'm really reaching for something here, game. Throw me a bone. Actually, this might be a good time to complain about modern Sonic's personality, and more about the writing in the game in general. Modern Sonic is annoying. He's been annoying for a long time. <laughs> Baldy nose hair! That's the best thing I've heard all day! Hey! I've been looking for you, Baldy McNose hair! Sonic used to be a fun-loving guy with attitude. Nowadays, he's either obnoxious, a jerk, or constantly talking about the powers of friendship. The things that can't be defeated are heart, soul, and the bonds of friendship. <laughs> oh, that's a line that's actually in the game. Seriously, why does Sonic talk about the powers of friendship so many times in this game? It just seems like Sega hasn't been able to nail Sonic's personality in quite a while. Even in some of the awful Sonic games, the character himself was less annoying. And really, all of this corny speech about friendship, along with the lame jokes, really doesn't mesh well with the incredibly dark and edgy plot they seem to be going for. Oh man, that's not good. None of this is good, Vector. That's why it's called war. This may seem like a bad thing, but it's not. It's a great thing. This game is laugh out loud hilarious. One very bizarre and funny thing that they did was have the avatar character basically be the chosen one. They go through a character arc and are portrayed as the hero of the story, the one everyone relies on. What's this called? Mary Sue? The avatar character is a total Mary Sue. And I get it, this appeals to some people. They make this character and project themselves onto it and then the game portrays them as the ultimate hero. But to me, this just makes this the most fanfic -y Sonic game ever, and I just find it funny. That's not to say I'm entirely happy about the story, though. The writing is often, if not always, pretty terrible. It's that sound again. Also, he just disappeared in the thin air right in front of you, but nah, don't mention that. A lot of the characters in this game just have very little to do. They pretty much just stand there and talk. It'd be cool if the story was a bit more in-depth than if they actually wrote in a purpose for half of these characters to be around. Tails, for instance, is portrayed as being extremely reliant on Sonic. Like, Sonic is defeated and apparently it causes Tails to, quote, lose it. He abandoned the Rebellion, and when he was in danger, he just cowered and called for Sonic to help him, even though he's most likely dead? What happened to his character arc in Sonic Adventure 1? And his identical character arc in Sonic Adventure 2? Or the many games that portrayed him as a genius who could take care of himself? Or in the last game! Literally, the last main series Sonic game made a big deal out of Sonic treating Tails like a baby that couldn't take care of himself. And then Tails proving that, as a genius, he could do just fine. I'm really okay with this story being dumb and melodramatic and cheesy and overly dark or whatever, but at least get the characters right. Sir, the ideas that you faxed over to me, specifically the ones for Tails, they, they just don't really work. They don't really mesh well with the direction we've been taking the character with the last few games. <laughs> Still though, even with all of that said, the story was a plus in my eyes. It was very enjoyable. It took itself way too seriously and made me laugh quite a bit. The music in this game is... well, it's good, but overall I wouldn't call it great. The theme song is good, it's very catchy, and Infinite's theme is hilarious, as I've already mentioned. The music in the levels is a bit hit or miss, though. Each of the three characters has a different style of music. The modern Sonic stages are the best, fast-paced, and sometimes fairly catchy. The classic Sonic stages have... not the best music. There was maybe one stage that had music that I found catchy, and the rest were just really annoying. It sounds like they were trying to make music that sounded like it was coming from a Sega Genesis, but without the knowledge or skill that goes into making such old hardware sound good. And the Avatar levels... just... wow. I mean, don't get me wrong, the music in the Avatar levels is pretty good for the most part, and oftentimes very amusing, but for the most part it just didn't fit.
It's like Sonic R all over again, except possibly even more unfitting to the levels. The graphics are pretty much the only thing left to talk about. They're good. Everything looks sharp, runs at a smooth 60 frames per second, at least on the PS4. The lighting is really good. It looks... good. I still say that Sonic Generations technically looks better, though. It was more colorful, and it had a lot more visual variety. And I found that the animations for Sonic were better. The way that Sonic moves in Sonic Forces looks a lot more robotic. Like when you're running straight ahead, he doesn't move as much. His animations just seem more stilted. Maybe this was just me, but I found that the animations for Sonic and Generations looked better. And I'm only mentioning this because I was constantly thinking about it throughout the whole game. Sonic Generations also had several set pieces in the levels that gave you a sense of adrenaline. A giant robotic fish jumping up and chasing after you, swinging on a hook high up over a giant looking level. There were parts where the camera angles would change, zoom in, zoom out, the levels felt more cinematic and energetic. They attempt to have some of this in Sonic Forces, and it works on occasion. The Metropolis level for the Avatar character was actually good. It was constantly altering gravity, flinging you all over the city. But usually this game doesn't do it as well as Generations. Oh, there's a giant worm in the background as I fly through the air far away from it, and immediately slow down a bit as soon as I land. Oh no, I've been eaten by a giant snake! Okay, I broke out. Oh look, a series of quick time events. You get the idea. Overall, in Generations, the levels just felt more lively and faster. And also, the biggest problem with the graphics in this game, a good chunk of the time in 2D sections, which make up most of the game by the way, I can barely see where I am on screen. Your character is often very small and blends in, or there's just a lot going on on the screen. This is just a dumb oversight. Just make the character bigger or brighter, and design your game in a way where the player can see where they are. It's kind of important. Alright, I've talked about pretty much everything. One last thing I should note though, and it's a pretty big negative, is that this game is short. The main campaign can easily be beaten in like four hours. And while it's true that Sonic games tend to be about replaying levels, learning them, mastering them, and collecting all of the red rings, even with that, this game still feels lacking. Mostly because of how short the levels are. The average Sonic Generations level was like three minutes long, while here it's more like one minute. The levels are short. And yeah, there may be more levels, but, I mean, if the levels aren't fun, then that doesn't really matter. Oh, and I forgot to mention earlier that the boss battles are... okay at best. A couple of them are pretty good, to be honest, but most of them feel very underwhelming and a bit uninspired. And there's not even a boss battle for Chaos. Why is he even in the game? So, after all of that, is Sonic Forces an awful game? Well... not really? I've mainly been comparing it to Sonic Generations this whole time, and it's definitely inferior to it in most respects. But as its own game, it's okay. Not great. Not... good. But okay. If you can overcome the bad controls and physics, and don't mind the lack of variety and polish, and you're a huge Sonic fan, then this game can still entertain. It looks great, for the most part, sounds great, for the most part, it's not as good as I wanted, not even close, and I doubt that I'll personally be returning to it anytime soon. But to be fair, there was still some fun to be had. Hopefully for their next game, they'll actually take their time and polish it. Alright, now let's start on that Big the Cat fishing simulator I've been talking about. If we start it now, we should be able to release it next month at the latest. Hello? A anyone there? And like I said before, this game's plot is very funny. If you've become more and more tired of the incredibly badly written, simplistic, and cartoony plots from the last few games, then this game will probably entertain. Look. Cheer up, Tails. I'm sure we'll run into him again. Yeah, of course you will. Sega loves to reuse ideas. All that I see now is not the same. All you remember. What a what a confusing song to play during the credits. Why? Why this ballad? This whole game was trying to be as edgy and serious as possible, to comedic result. And then the war is over, the heroes win, and then Sonic's like, Let's go clean up this decimated world! Yeah! And then boom, very unfitting credits music. You know what? I'm convinced. 
They knew. Sega knew what they were making. They knew that this game was ridiculous and stupid as hell. The ultra edgy characters, the ridiculous infinite theme, the Mary Sue avatar character who saves the day, the dumb jokes, the contrived plot. They knew that this was a comedic goldmine. They had to have known and done all this on purpose. All right, with that, I am done. There's the game. Next review is going to be something smaller. We'll be returning to the Sega Game Gear. There's an invisible wall here. <sighs> oh, Sega.